Welcome to See Our First Kids Big City Studio Online. I am so excited because today we are starting a new series, but I'm going to go ahead and let Miss Caitlin introduce it. Hey kids, welcome to our new series, Every Soul Matters to God. Now when you hear that phrase, you might have a few questions. For instance, what's a soul and what does it mean to matter? Well, a soul is basically a person. It's the part of your life that goes with you after you die. And if something matters to you, it's really important. So when we say every soul matters to God, we mean every person is important to God. But before we get too far in our lesson, I want you to check out this video. Hey everyone, my name is Damaris and I'm here to introduce our brand new series, Every Soul Matters to God. Did you hear that? Every soul. That's a whole bunch of people. In fact, did you know there are approximately 7.7 .7 billion people in this world? That's a lot. Wanna know something else that's crazy? According to scientists, there are 1 billion trillion stars in the universe that we know of. And the Bible says in Isaiah 40, 26, God calls each star by its name. Can you imagine keeping up with that many names? Sometimes my grandma gets me and my sister's names mixed up. Hey, Patsy Jean. Grandma, it's Samaras. Those don't even sound similar. I can't imagine keeping up with one billion trillion names. And neither can my grandma. Hey there, Donna. But God knows every star by name. And guess what? Isaiah chapter 40 also says, the same God that knows the stars by name takes care of his people. That's you and me. If God knows the stars, how much more does he know and love people? Way more. That means he knows every person's name too. All 7.7 .7 billion of us, even you. Today we're learning how every soul matters to God. Not just good souls, Christians, nice people, rich people, or people who are just like you and me. Nope, every single person, ever. Now it's time for you to get into your lesson all about how every soul matters to God. Until next time, this is Damaris. See ya! Wow, there are a lot of people in this world and God loves every single one. Every soul matters to God. We're gonna learn more about that today, but first we need to learn our what you gotta know. Now, Boudreaux is on vacation this week, so I have to teach you the whole thing. So listen really closely. It's every color, shape, and size, they are precious in his eyes. And the actions go like this. Every color, shape, and size, they are precious in his eyes. Okay, everybody do it with me. Hey, what you gotta know? Every color, shape, and size, they are precious in his eyes. Nice job, guys, way to go. Hey guys, what you gotta know? Every color, shape, and size, they are precious in his eyes. Good job, good job. Hey, what's going on? Running's a bomb, isn't it? Uh, yeah, who are you? I'm Rhonda, Rhonda Race, but you can call me Rhonda. Or you can call me Sugar Pie. My mom called me, calls me that. Uh, either one, I don't care. Um, I think I'll just go with Rhonda. So what are you doing here, Rhonda? Well, I was cutting through this building on my way to a running meeting. Uh, what's going on in, in here anyways? A kid genius school takeover? Close, but no. This is Big City Studio. And today we're learning that every soul matters to God. Whoa, every soul? Even the smelly, dirty, stinky ones? Uh, yeah. Every soul. And um, God loves everyone the same. And uh, they matter what they smell like. Well, I knew God likes us, but to think that he cares about my old stinky runny shoes, that's mind blowing. Okay, why would God care about your shoes? He cares about people, not 
shoes. Well, you said every soul matters to God, and my stinky shoes that I have over 430 miles on have laces, a tongue, and a soul. Oh, okay. I get it now. I see where you're coming from. You're talking about S-O-L-E soul, and I'm talking about S-O-U-L soul. Souls as in the human soul, not in the shoe soul. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I totally get it now. Um, well, that definitely changes the meaning yeah. of every soul matters to God. Yeah, it does. I guess it might be okay to throw away my shoes then. That might be a really good idea. <laughs> well, so now that I know every soul, as in a person, matters to God, what should I do with that information? It seems pretty important. It is important. We should all go all over the place and tell people that they matter to God. Well, I can do that. I guess you forget that. Oh, yeah. You matter to God and you matter to God and you do. Not your shoes, you. Uh, that's really Good, that's the attitude we should all have, Rhonda. <laughs> you know what? I think, I think that, oh, excuse me? Well, what were you gonna say? I interrupted you. I, I gotta go meet up with my uh, running buddies here. We gotta, okay. you know, you know, okay. <laughs> meet up and go spread the word. I'll okay. do that while I'm running. It's a great idea. I'll run along okay. and I'll go say, hey, your souls better to God. Your souls better to God. I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Rhonda. Kids, welcome back. Wow, that was a fun game. Are you guys ready for story time? Because it's story time. And today's story comes from Acts chapter 10. And it's all about a guy named Peter and his attitude towards people. So today's Bible story is about Peter from Acts chapter 10. One day, God appeared to the apostle Peter in a dream while he was sleeping. God showed Peter a vision 
of a blanket coming down from heaven that had a bunch of different animals on it, lions and tigers and bears and pigs and goats and sheep. And God told people, Peter, to kill the animals and eat them. This food was the kind of food that Peter had been taught never to eat. That was the important part. So Peter was so offended. He was so offended. He couldn't believe that God was asking him to eat that kind of food. He told God, I have never eaten anything on Peter. God told Peter, though, don't call anything impure that I have made clean. And this happened three times. And then Peter woke up. Wow. Through those dreams, Peter realized that God was trying to teach him an important lesson. God was trying to teach Peter a lesson about his attitude towards people. You see, Peter had a big problem. He and some of the other disciples had bad feelings about anyone who was not Jewish by birth. They told the Jews about Jesus, no problem. But the disciples refused to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people who were not Jews. Peter was one of the main disciples who dealt with this prejudice, with this bad feeling towards other people when he chose not to love others because they're different. Right after Peter woke up from his dream, there was a knock, knock, knock at his door. The men at the door were servants of a man named Cornelius. And one of them said, my master Cornelius would like to see you. And so they took Peter to Cornelius' house. Now, Cornelius was not a Jew, but God had told Cornelius to bring Peter to his house so that Peter could tell everyone about Jesus. Peter realized that God was trying to teach him something very, very important through the dreams that he had. You see, God loves everyone the same. Peter told Cornelius and his family, I now realize that God does not show favoritism, but he accepts men from every nation and tribe. He basically said, I have come to realize that every person, every soul matters to God. Wow, that was a powerful moment. Peter prayed with Cornelius' entire family to accept Jesus that day. It was a miracle. And it only happened because Peter chose to treat others just like God treats us. He showed love to Cornelius and his family, even though they were a little bit different than Peter was. That's what each of us gets to do as well. We get to show love to everyone. Today in our lesson, we're going to learn about the importance of loving others and treating people like they matter to us. If every soul and every person matters to God, then every soul and every person matters to us too. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the power verse and see what God's word has to say today. <laughs> Up here, look up here, look up here. Oh, sorry, it's practicing my bird calls. Hey, my name is Kent Hiria. I'm 72 years old, so I'm a little bit hard of hearing. But the reason why I'm here is I'm here to teach you today's power verse. And today's power verse says, The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. 2 Peter 3, 9. Wow, that was a wonderful verse, wasn't it? 
Now, I tell you what I'm going to need you to do. I'm going to need you to say it with me and say it loud. After all, I am a little hard of hearing. If you can say it so loud that my loudometer gets all the way up to 10, then we're going to get to do something really fun to my nephew. <sharp inhale> Gary said he wants me to put a cat on his head. <sharp inhale> okay, so here we go. On the count of three, make it loud. One, two, three. The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed but wants everyone to repent. 2 Peter 3, 9. Oh, that was pretty good, pretty good. But I still can't hear you. <laughs> Get it? All right, we're going to try it one more time, but this time I want it to be loud. Let's get this thing all the way up to 10, all right? Here we go. One, two, three. The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. 2 Peter 3, 9. Oh, great job, great job. That was very loud. Oh, here comes my nephew now. <laughs> hey, Perry. Uncle Kent, my name is Gary. Whatever. Hey, you remember the other day whenever you told me you wanted me to put a cat on your head? What? No. It was sunny outside, and I said I wanted a hat on my head. Not a cat on my head, a hat on my head. Oh, well, I heard cat, and so what I did was I went over to your Aunt Vicky's and I got that kitty cat that you were always afraid of growing up. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is now. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. No! Oh, well, guess I scared him. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I gotta go. Until next time, it's your old buddy Kent saying, see ya. But I can't hear you. <laughs>
that they come from. That's called prejudice. Isn't that sad? It's not only sad, but it's the opposite of how God wants us to be. Even the apostle Peter struggled with this. Even though Jesus told the disciples it was their job to go and make disciples of all nations, all people, all types, that was their instruction. It was very clear. You'd think the disciples would have understood and had no issues at all because that's what Jesus told them to do. They were take, supposed to take the gospel to everyone. Well, through the first dream that Peter had, through the dream that Peter had, he realized that God was trying to teach him some lessons that we need to learn as well. The first thing that we need to learn that God told Peter and taught him was that God loves everyone the same. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world. It doesn't say he only loves certain people, does it? God sees everyone the same. He doesn't love one, more, one group more than the other. He doesn't love um, uh, Australians um, more than he loves Africans or Americans or Latinos. He loves every single nationality, every single people group the same. He loves tall people, just as much as he loves short people. He like loves left-handed people just as much as he does right-handed people. Everyone is equal in God's eyes. Now, we don't always act like that's the case, do we? Sometimes we act like we think we are better than others. We treat people who are different than us like they're not as good as we are. We think, I can't be friends with those people. It's kind of like we put a label on them that says loser or trash, and that is not what God wants us to do. You know, we must never label others. We do that sometimes. We label others and we put them in a group. We think that some people are more important than others, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you if you were here, I'd have you come up, but since you're not, it's okay. I'm gonna write a word on a name tag because sometimes we label people as this. We label people as nerds. We decide that that person is a nerd. They aren't good for anything other than reading books and getting good grades and taking tests. What are other labels that we put on people? Sometimes we label people athletes athletes now sometimes when we name people an athlete we think they're strong and they're good at athletics and good at sports but they sure can't be good at school or very smart and don't do good on tests that isn't right either what's another label one label that we use is we label people as poor. And we decide that that person doesn't have much money and they don't dress very nicely, so I can't be their friend because I won't be as popular if I'm friends with someone who I have labeled as poor. What other labels are there? This is one. Sometimes we label people as liars. Maybe you have a person who told a lie once or exaggerated once, and so then you decide they can't be trusted ever again. Boys and girls, those are not labels that we should put on any person. Now here's the last one, and I'm gonna write it. The last label we label people, there's a lot of them, but the last one we're gonna talk about today is popular. And this might be the person who's the most popular kid in school. So then we automatically assume that they're cool and they're amazing and I should be doing everything they do. I should follow their example. Now, boys and girls, that is not true either. 
We put labels on others. We decide how much they are worth based on the labels that we give them or that others give them. The problem is that when we label others, many times it keeps us from showing them God's love. And that's what was happening with Peter. So what should we do? We must love others just as God loves them. I must love others just as God loves them. We need to learn the same lesson that Peter learned. We should never label others as not worthy or not as good as we are. We have to get rid of the labels and begin to look at others through God's eyes. God sees everyone as important, everyone as valued, and everyone as loved. He sees everyone as worthy of his love. He says, sees everyone as worthy of sending his son to die for. I would like to pray with you today because this is a pretty big thing. This is so important to God that we love others because he loved every one of us and he sent his son to die for every one of us. So Lord Jesus, forgive us if we have been guilty of labeling others. We just repent of putting people in boxes and in different places that, that you don't. Help us to see us, see them the way that you see them. Lord God, help us to love others the way that you love them, that we would begin to understand that every soul matters to you. We love you. We want to be just like your son, Jesus. We want to be Jesus to everybody that we meet. And in your name we pray, amen. Amen, guys. I love you. I will see you next week on Every Soul Matters to God in Big City Studio. Don't forget, lunchtime devotions every day, as well as Zoom on Monday and Tuesday night. See you next week. Oh, and summer challenge. Don't forget to pick up your package. Love you. I will talk to you later next week.